I'm financial expert and New York Times bestselling author, Nicole Lappin. And I'm Magnify, the AI assistant that powers the Magnify app. And we are your money assistants. On the show, we help people overcome financial setbacks and meet their money goals. So here's what we're gonna do. First, you'll hear me talk to a guest about their relationship with money and their financial dreams. And then I'll provide a personalized game plan developed by the most cutting edge financial technology. If you want us to be your financial assistants, listen to the end of the episode to hear how. Until then, this is who we'll be assisting today. Hi, my name is Jake and I make $100,000 a year and I contribute 5% of my salary to my 401k. I don't have debt and my money goal is to buy a house. Okay, Jake, that's a great goal. Let's uh, put your money assistant to work in just a bit, but we of course can't start there. So let's start with your story and how money has played a role in that story. Let's play a little game, if you will. It's a word association game. I'm going to say a word and then you tell me the first word that comes to your mind. Investing. Rich. Retirement. Relaxation. Love an alliteration. Debt. Awful. Yeah. Savings. Important. Mortgage. Stressful. Money. Status. Oh, so interesting that you said debt is awful. A mortgage is stressful. A mortgage is, of course, a debt, by the way. So there's a lot of negative association there. Then why do you want to buy a house? Well, I live in New York City where there's so much housing instability. I've been in the same apartment for years now, and every year my landlord raises the rent. And my biggest concern is that my landlord could just sell the building and then I'd be screwed. Yeah, that would suck. Okay, so we'll circle back to that. But I also found it interesting that your first thought around money was status. I haven't gotten that answer yet. Uh, Can you tell me a little bit more about why you said that? Again. I live in New York City, which is the epicenter of the rat race in keeping up with the Joneses. A big group of my friends moved to the city after college, and most of them work in finance, insurance, and other high-paying jobs. They make a stupid amount of money. I feel like I need to keep up with them, and if they want to go out to a fancy dinner, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the reason we go someplace else. Can I ask how old you are? I'm 28. Oh, my little baby cakes. Okay, so let's talk about that rat race a little bit more. What do you think would happen if you told your pals, and again, those are your pals, that you just couldn't ball out on dinner because you're trying to save your money. You're trying to get a house. You have big goals. Are you worried that you're just going to be like exiled from the group or what? No, my friends are good people. I don't worry that they wouldn't like me or that they'd like doubt me. Um, but I do have some anxiety around it because I was once dating somebody who dumped me because I didn't make enough money and that really hurt. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. It was pretty terrible, but dodged a bullet. Um, what, what was the story there? What happened? I was seeing a girl right after college and she was making more money than me and she just didn't want to be making more money than her partner. She had expectations that the guy she's with would be a breadwinner and it just wasn't me at the time. Well, first of all, I'm so sorry that happened to you. And I'm sure your best friends told you at the time, screw her. That is so not right. You could do so much better because that's what besties are for. And you and I are basically besties now, Jake. Surprise. Uh, But we can't trash talk her, honestly, for her own baggage around money because money is complicated. You're experiencing it now with your friends. And it sounds like this girl you were with was experiencing it in her own way. You know, my money trauma from my childhood still shows shows up in my relationships. So I know this is real. And here's something I really, really want you to hear. When my money baggage shows up in my relationships, it has nothing to do with the dude. It has nothing to do with my partner. It has everything to do with me. And I know it's the same for the girl you were seeing. It's not personal. It's not a rejection of you. It does not mean you are not worthy enough or statusy enough. It's not actually about you. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know that. It just has stuck with me and I've had a hard time shaking it. I'm worried this is going to come up again in other relationships too. I mean, I think you're putting a little bit too much weight on this. It's just another compatibility factor. We all have types. It's normal for us to talk about the type of sense of humor we're looking for in a partner, the values you want to have, even physical traits like how tall someone is ideally. But it's taboo to talk about finance as a compatibility factor. But I think we should all try to normalize it because then we wouldn't all take it so personally. Yeah. So what I'll say to you first is that, so 
All right. What I'll say to you first is that you are making six figures. You're doing awesome. So if you do meet someone who only dates someone who's making, I don't know, a million figures, oh, well, thank you next. You will find you will find someone who's compatible with you on all fronts and their relationship will be that much stronger because there's no tension coming from differing financial expectations. Yeah, it's a good point. Do you think that your interest in home ownership is also rooted in status? Maybe to some extent, but the fear of my landlord raising my rent is real. That makes sense. I also lived in New York City. It is so real. So let's do this. Let's bring on your money assistant and make a plan to lock in your dream home. Are you ready? Yep. Hi, I'm your AI investing assistant powered by Magnify. And yes, I'm AI. I'm engineered to answer your biggest investing questions and help you make your money work for you. Hello, Jake. Hi. It is suggested that putting down at least 20% when applying for a mortgage will help you avoid paying for private mortgage insurance and secure better interest rates. How much of a down payment do you need? In New York City, really right now, you need a million dollars just to look at real estate. But I'm considering moving out of the city where I think I could get something for 650000 So Magnify, uh, carry the one. That's a 130 k down payment, basically. Okay. So in how many years do you want to purchase the house? As soon as possible. So three? How much do you already have saved toward your down payment? I can put aside about ten grand of my savings right now. How much are you currently contributing annually to your down payment? I don't really have a set number, but I'd say I could probably start to do a thousand a month, so twelve grand a year. Okay, saving one hundred and thirty thousand dollars in three years can be a difficult goal to achieve. Let me help you by building an investment portfolio to maximize your chances. Cool, thanks. I have created an investment portfolio tailored to your goal of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars towards your house down payment in three years. Based on an initial investment of $10,000 and continual contribution of $12,000 each year toward your portfolio, you will have an expected shortfall of $80,200 below your objective of $130,000. Do you want to know how you can improve your chances of meeting your goal? Yes. Okay. Here are some options to improve your plan. Adjust your savings plan from $12,000 to $39,201. Adjust your risk from moderate to aggressive or adjust your timeline from three years to nine years. Okay, I'll adjust my timeline to nine years. Great. Do you want me to create a portfolio that maximizes your chances of reaching $130,000 in nine years? Yes. Okay. It looks like you're well on your way based on your initial investment of $10,000 and continual contribution of $12,000 each year toward your portfolio. You have a success chance of 85% of achieving your goal of $130,000. Here's the portfolio I would recommend. 39% in SPY, 26% in AGG, 18% in IEFA, 12% in BNDX, 3% in IEMG, 2% in VWOB. Cool. Thanks, Magnify. So, Jake, you can ask Magnify for more info on all of these stocks. I know that investing comes with, like, so many acronyms. It's all alphabet soup. But top level, this portfolio has you invested in funds that basically mirror the overall stock market, bonds, emerging markets, and more. Got it. Yeah, I'll spend some time looking at all of these different funds. Okay, so let's talk about the Big picture again for a second. I know your first thought around your goal was that you would buy a house in three years, but Magnify said a more realistic goal would be nine years. How does that make you feel? Yeah, not great, to be honest. I just already have this fear that I'm falling behind my friends and thinking that they're all going to be buying houses soon and I'm not going to be anywhere close until I'm 37 is honestly feels like a bit of a bummer. Okay, Jake. Well, first of all, I am older than 37, and I currently don't own a house because right now renting is better for me. So you're not behind me, if that makes you feel any better. (laughs) (laughs) But also, I know a reality check can suck, but it is super important because the alternative would be that you keep putting away 12K, and then in three years, you're like, cool, cool, I'm ready to buy my house now, and you're 80 grand short. Now you know how you have the best chance of actually achieving those goals. 
Yeah, it's true. I needed the wake up call. Sometimes we all need a wake up call. So Magnify gave you a few options when helping you make a game plan, like investing in riskier assets or putting aside more money every year. There are also some other options as well. Depending on the mortgage you qualify for, you might be able to do less than 20% as a down payment, which of course means you'll be borrowing way more money for your mortgage and you'll likely spend more over the lifetime of the loan because of interest. Or you could look for a cheaper house. Have you really started the house hunting process yet? Not really. Yeah, so I'll give you a little sneak preview. It's a tough market. Housing prices are still really steep, plus mortgage rates are really high. So if you're looking to buy something ASAP, you're going to need to widen the location range to further and further outside the city. Yeah, that makes sense. So... I would say do some research. Crushing Zillow is like my favorite pastime. See what your options are. And if you have any updated data points, like you can find options for less than 650K, ask Magnify to help you make a new game plan. But more importantly, the homework I'd give you is to make peace with where you're at in your own financial journey because you are doing really great, by the way. Let's just sit in that. You're doing really great. You're making 100K. You have no debt. You're doing better than most people your age. And you said it yourself. Your friends are awesome. And I'm sure they would rather go to a more inexpensive spot if it means that they get to hang out with you and all of your awesomeness. And if you don't want to have a conversation with your friends about wanting to cut your spending, I have a little hack for you. Yeah. Become the planner of your group and you pick the restaurants. And so you find the ones that are more in your price range, but also a really cool kitschy place. Let's say if you guys are going to hang out, you can choose one of the bajillion things to do in New York City that are free or cheap. I used to subscribe to all of those like free things to do in New York newsletters. There are a bunch of them. Skint is one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a really good point. Yep. Does that make you feel a little bit better? Yeah, I do think I need to cut myself some slack. So this has been really helpful. Thank you. I'm so glad. While I don't believe in 100% woo-woo nonsense, money is a mindset. And in order to get into the market and stay in the market, you do need to have confidence in your decision making. So, Jake, repeat after me. I will invest in myself. I will invest in myself. Do the work. Do the work. And meet my financial goals. And meet my financial goals. Money Assistant is a production of Money News Network. Money Assistant is a sponsored podcast by Magnify. Magnify is the AI designed to help you invest. Yes, you. You too can have me and Magnify as your money assistants. Subscribe to Magnify at moneyassistant.com and not only will you get your own AI financial sidekick, but you'll also get access to a members-only live Zoom workshop with me where I'll answer your investing questions and together we'll get you on the road to financial freedom. Advisory services are offered through Magnify LLC and SEC registered investment advisor. Mutual funds and exchange traded funds, ETFs, are sold by perspective. Please consider the investment objectives, risks, changes, and expenses carefully before investing. The perspective which contains this and other information about the investment company can be obtained by the fund company or your financial professional. Be sure to read the perspective very carefully before you decide whether to invest. This is a sponsored podcast paid for by Magnify LLC. I'm a client of Magnify LLC, so this should be considered an endorsement or testimonial. Magnify LLC is a client of Money News Network LLC, so I do have an incentive to promote this client. The testimonials provided may not represent the experience of other clients and are not a guarantee of future performance or success. Opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Magnify LLC. The topics discussed and opinions given are not intended to address the specific needs of any listener. Magnify LLC does not offer legal or tax advice. Listeners are encouraged to discuss their financial needs with the appropriate professional regarding your individual circumstance.